Welcome back to Space Case. We are on page 127, chapter 8, Unexpected Help. Okay. 127. Lunar Day 188, uh, so we're still on the same day. This whole 126 pages has been on the same day. Uh, we are now in the afternoon. I knew Dr. Holtz, Kira told me. Back on Earth, he and my father worked on some projects together. They told us about his death as we were landing. They said it was an accident, that he made an unauthorized moonwalk. But that doesn't sound right to me. I ran my fingers through my hair, worried. Nina had warned me not to tell people Dr. Holtz had been murdered. And I'd already done it. Of course, it wasn't exactly my fault. How was I supposed to know that the lousy lunar contractors had made the walls too thin? But still, if Nina found out about this, on top of all the other things, that she was upset at me about, for all I knew, she'd sentence me to remain on the moon until I was 60. Look, I said, I'm not really supposed to be investigating this at all. Who were you talking to in the room then? Kira asked. I got the idea that it was someone in security. It, it's hard to explain. From where I sat on the catwalk, I was still visible to everyone down by the airlock including Nina, so I faced forward away from Kira and templed my fingers in front of my mouth, trying to give the impression that I wasn't talking to anyone at all. But it was an adult, right? Er, right? So then you've been asked to do it. It's not like we'd be snooping around on our own. Well, we'd still be in trouble if we got caught. Let's not get caught then, Kira grinned. I'm serious, I told her. You just got here. You don't want to get off on the wrong foot with Nina. I'll be careful. I can handle this. I've done worse. I was about to act, ask like what, but before I could, down in the staging area, Nina turned toward me as though she had sensed I was talking about her. She couldn't see Kira, but the sight of me simply sitting on the catwalk was enough to get her angry. I told you to wait in my office, she yelled. It's locked, I called back. Nina scowled and kept staring at me. Kira took a step back, making sure she was out of Nina's eye line, then mused. I wonder if she had something to do with Dr. Holtz's death. It's kind of suspicious ordering everyone not to investigate a murderer, isn't it? A murder, isn't it? It's hard to deny this, but then thought about it. Put my hand over my mouth, trying to look thoughtful as I covered my lips. You're right, it is. So, let me help then. I'm pretty good with computers myself. Can you hack? Yeah, a bit. What do you need? The security tapes of... <coughs> Excuse me. Dr. Holt's going out the airlock this morning. Kira frowned. Oh, that's not going to be easy. I know, I'm not sure if even Roddy can do it. In the staging area, Nina started heading my way. Nina's coming, I warned. Better go before she sees you. Kira didn't question this. She quickly ducked back into her room. I'll see what I can get you. There was a gleam of excitement in her eye as she closed the door. Nina reached the base of the stairs. If Kira had been a half a second slower, Nina would have seen her. Instead, Nina only saw me sitting by myself. She came up the steps to the catwalk. I hopped to my feet to meet her. Who were you talking to? Nina asked. Apparently, covering my mouth with my hand hadn't fooled her. Violet, I lied, pointing down to the rec room. She was down there. She came out into the hall and wanted to know where her parents were. I told her and she went back in. Nina cased both levels of the hallway, trying to determine... If I was lying. The halls were empty and there was no one else around. 
excuse me, for her to presume I'd been talking to. Nina shifted her attention back to me. I want you to go into your room and stay there. You're grounded until I say otherwise. What? I asked. You can't do that. You're not my mom. At this base, I have a the authority to delegate any punishment I see fit. I gave you a direct order to stay out of the staging area, and you disobeyed it. What was I supposed to do? Let the Sojbergs beat me up? Do you know how difficult it was to requisition those eggs, Nina demanded? NASA didn't want to send them. I spent hours working every angle I could. They were going to be a treat for everyone up here, a special reward for their hard work. And now that's not going to happen. Every last egg is broken, and after this disaster, NASA will never agree to ship any more. Which means it will be three years until I taste a fresh egg again. Oh, I thought, so that's what this is all about. What all this is about. For all her posturing that I had disobeyed orders, Nina was really upset that she'd lost her precious eggs. Sure, she was claiming she'd requested them for everyone, but she wouldn't have spent hours on it unless she really wanted them for herself. I understood where she was coming from, though. We all have our own food obsessions at MBA. You have no idea what you're really, what you'll really miss until you get here. Personally, I'd have thought I would want ice cream more than anything else, but now that I'm on the moon, for some reason, I always find myself craving picante sauce. I couldn't imagine what would have happened if a jar had been shipped up for me and then ended up broken. I might have been desperate enough to lick everything up off the floor. And yet, I was still ticked off that I was getting punished for this, while the Sogebergs were getting off scot-free because they were rich. What am, I, what am I supposed to do in my room all day, I asked. You haven't updated your video login over a week, Nina told me. Start with that. That'll only take five minutes, I protested. No, Nina said. I want you to take your time with this. Think about it very carefully. Don't say one word about Dr. Holtz's death being suspicious. You mean I can't say anything about his death? You're welcome to talk about it. In fact, I encourage you to. The public knows all about the death by now, and they're eager to hear what we all have to say. So tell them what a great man Dr. Holtz was. Let them know you're upset. He's gone. But do not, under any circumstances, even hint that there might be might have been foul play. I'm going to review your video before you post it. And if I don't like it, I'll have you do it again. So don't take this lightly. No crazy stories about moon dragons or finding hordes of green cheese today. Is that clear? Crystal, I muttered. Then headed into my room and slam the door behind me. Nina might have been upset about the eggs, but she'd used the incident to manipulate me in a big way. By grounding me, she was shutting down any chance I had to investigate Dr. Holtz's death or recruit anyone else to help me. And by demanding that I compose a video log about Dr. Holtz, Nina was forcing me to publicly back her side of the story. If I decided to push the murder angle later, I'd come across as fickle, like not knowing his own mind. Found myself thinking about Kira's suggestion. If Nina truly had been involved in Dr. Holtz's death, she was certainly in a great position to cover her tracks. She was doing everything in her power to muzzle me and derail any investigation. I sat at the slim screen table. Instead of starting my video log, I said, Computer, get me all the information you can on Nina Stack. It would be my pleasure, the computer exclaimed. It instantly opened a comm link and brought up a dozen web pages about Nina. I figured there was no harm in using a comm link now. It wasn't like Nina could punish me any more than she had already. Now that the link was open, I discovered that I had hundreds of messages as well. Virtually everyone I knew on Earth had reached out to me after hearing about Dr. Holtz's death. I read a few. They all ba said basically the same thing. Heard the news, thinking about you, let me know how you are. Riley Bach had left a dozen messages herself. With all the excitement, I'd forgotten that I promised to call her that day. It would have to wait a little longer, though. I had investigating to do. 
I scanned through the web pages about Nina, but there was nothing I didn't already know. Either Nina had never done anything wrong in her life, or NASA had completely whitewashed her history. Whatever the case, every biography of Nina was glowing. She was a decorated soldier, a clever scientist, a highly respected employee, and the top choice to command MBA. A competent, straight-laced, and as honest as could be. I'm on 134. But then all our official bios read like that. First, NASA had truly sought out extremely well-behaved people to serve at MBA, not wanting any chance of a scandal. And then, if we had ever misbehaved even a little bit, NASA had scrubbed any mention of that from our records. For example, at school on Earth, I'd been sent to the principal's office plenty of times, but according to my bio, I'd been a model student. It made me sound like a boy scout however someone at mba obviously wasn't as moral as their bio claimed because they'd murdered dr holtz either they'd hidden their true nature or nasa had hidden it for them whatever the case whatever the case i probably wasn't going to find any dirt on them online has anyone at mba ever done anything wrong i sighed your sister once puts chewing gum in the rehydrator the computer replied, right, I'd forgotten about that. Violet had broken the machine, forcing us all to eat non-rehydrated food cubes for two days until Mr. Grisson could fix it. I meant the adults. Lars Salzberg is rumored to have done some shady things in his business dealings. I straightened up annoyed at myself for not thinking of the Salzbergs first. Show me what you've got. Hundreds of web pages popped open so quickly, I worried they might overwhelm the comm link. Spent the next hour reading through them. In his business, Lars had been accused of everything, from ignoring environmental laws, to bribing government officials, to violating oil embargoes. However, none of the charges had ever stuck. Inevitably, someone below Lars at his company had ended up taking the fall, while Lars himself came out unscathed. He was known to say, when you're at the top of the heap, lots of people will try to drag you down to their level. And yet it was hard to believe that a fundamentally good person would have been accused of so many bad things. Instead, Lars came across as someone who had behaved badly time and time again, but who had the wealth and power to avoid getting in trouble. Could Lars Sojberg have killed Dr. Holtz? It wasn't hard to imagine him committing murder. He was basically the worst person I'd ever met. Plus, he had a volcanic temper and was prone to fits of rage that shook the entire base. And now that I thought about it, Patton and Lily Sojberg were also volatile and violent. I wondered if either one of them were capable of murder, too. Rub my eyes, which were bleary from reading. Computer, can you bring up the news, I asked. Of course, main air. The web page for the New York Times appeared. When my parents were kids, there were lots of newspapers. One for almost every city. Now in America, only the Times is left. As I'd suspected, Dr. Holtz's death was the lead story. I tapped on the headline, which instantly linked to a video report. Footage of Dr. Holtz training for his mission at MBA appeared while a reporter began. Dr. Ronald Holtz... Lunar Knot on Moonbase Alpha and a highly respected professor died this morning during a routine moonwalk on the base. Routine? I repeated, surprised. Obviously, NASA was covering up the real details of the duck. Or maybe Nina had hidden the details from NASA. A telephone's ring interrupted the news report. Then a message flashed. Incoming call, Riley Bach. After so much time focusing on the Sojbergs, I was ready for a friendly face. I accepted the call. The news story automatically muted and shifted to the background while Riley's face popped up in a central window. Her sister Eliza, who was two years younger than us, was right next to her. They were speaking to me on Riley's smartwatch. While their car automatically drove them someplace, probably the beach, knowing the box. Ever since cars started driving themselves, parents have been letting them chaperone the kids. It was a gorgeously sunny, as usual... <laughs> The girls were wearing bikini tops, short board shorts, and sunglasses. 
The phone service on the moon isn't bad. In fact, I can get a better connection from MBA than I could from a lot of places in Hawaii. However, the signal has to travel 238,900 miles between the Earth and the moon. So it takes a few seconds between the time you speak and the time the other person hears it. Then there are another few seconds after they speak until you hear them. Originally, this was difficult to deal with. We ended up talking over each other all the time. But after a while, we got used to it. Since I speak to Riley every few days, she knows the routine. Hey, she said, is everything all right? I left you a ton of messages. Sorry, I didn't get them until an hour ago. They wanted us off the comm link. Oh, guess it's been an exciting day up there. Yeah, for once. NASA usually has sensor eavesdrop on our personal calls, but I've learned I can get away with insulting the base if I make it sound like sarcasm. I'm serious, Riley said. Are you doing okay? Did you know the guy? There are only 22 people here. Of course I knew him. You know what she means, Eliza said. Did you hang out with him, or was he just some old coot who never paid attention to you? My eyes flickered to the news footage of Dr. Holtz. It was now showing him boarding the rocket for the launch to the moon. He looked as happy as anyone could be, beaming in his spacesuit, waving cheerfully to the cameras. Somewhere in between, I admitted, since he was a lot older, he hung out more with the other adults than any of us kids. But he was always really nice to me. Everyone really liked him. Oh, Riley said, well, I'm sorry he's gone. Are you guys going going to have a funeral for him? To be honest, I have no idea. I don't know if anyone's even thought about that yet. Are you going to bury him there? Eliza asked. Is he going to be like the first dead guy laid to rest on the moon? I don't think so, I said. So what are you going to do? Eliza demanded. Shoot him into space? I doubt it, though I think Dr. Holtz might have liked that idea. Well, it's all over the news down here, Riley reported. Like the being the first human to die on the moon makes you a hero somehow. So we figured we'd check in. Thanks, I said. What are you up to, surfing? You know what, Kohala, Kohala looks like an epic break today. Check it. Riley turned her smartwatch so I could see they were arriving at the beach. On cue, a perfect wave came in, a beautiful blue curl. I groaned, ugh, missing Earth terribly. Come on, don't rub it in like that. Rub it in, Eliza asked. Dude, you're on the moon. You gotta hit, you hit six Gs on a rocket, Riley added. Kohola is probably as exciting as riding a merry-go-round compared to that. Yeah, I said, trying to sell it to the censors. You're right, but I still miss that place. Ha! Riley said, not believing me at all. You're famous, and you're having the adventure of a lifetime, and I get to go surfing every once in a while. Trust me, my life blows compared to yours. I desperately wanted to tell them the truth, that I wasn't lucky at all, that all the amazing stories they'd heard about life on the moon, none of which had come from me, by the way, were merely hype and public relations. Instead, I could only say, your life's not so bad. Mr. Cochran's going to flunk me in English, and Dad wants me to work at his office this summer, Riley shot back. What's good about that? She still had her smartwatch aimed to the, toward the beach. I noticed several friends from school there, pulling on wet suits and waxing their boards, feeling the sand in their toes, and the sun warm on their faces. In the distance, the surfer shot through the tunnel of a wave. It's all good, I told her, trust me. The Bach girl's car pulled into the sand lot by the beach and self-parked. Lori Yi Cohen, one of my classmates, sat down her surfboard and waved hello to them. Check it out, Riley said, pointing to her watch. I'm talking to Dash Gibson in space. Awesome, Lori exclaimed and waved to me. Hey, Dash, how's the moon? Great, I lied. How's Earth? All right, I guess. We miss you. This from a girl who hadn't even known I went to her school until my family got tapped for MBA. Then I got famous and suddenly everyone started acting like we'd been friends our whole lives. I don't mind when Riley milks her friendship with me for social status. We really are friends, and I'd do the same if she were the one on the moon. But it bugs me when other people do it. I miss all you guys, too, I said just to be polite. Take it easy, Lori picked up her board again and continued to the water's edge. 
Riley turned the watch back so I could see her. She now looked slightly concerned. I probably hadn't done a great job of hiding my homesickness. You sure you're all right? Yeah, I said, forcing a smile. I'm fine. Hey, some new girl came up there today, right? Eliza asked. Did you meet her yet? Yeah, I've met her. I'm her official welcomer. What's she like? asked Riley. She's nice. Ooh, Eliza crooned. You like her? And you gonna kiss her? Don't be such a dork. Riley shoved her sister out of the way. Out of the frame. Dash has a girlfriend. Dash has a girlfriend. Eliza sang unfaced, I'm the mood. Oh. Yep. Something suddenly caught my eye in the news report on Dr. Holtz, which was still running in the background on the slim screen. I wasn't quite sure what it was, as I'd been focused on the beach instead. But it was enough to make me sit up, aware I'd just missed something important. Riley must have noticed my expression change. What's wrong? I tapped the slim screen. Uh, pausing the news report on an image of a somewhat younger Dr. Holtz dressed for a fancy party. Nothing, I said. I have to jump. Oh, well, I've got to go myself, Riley told me. The waves are calling. Take it easy up there. If you start freaking out or anything, you know where to find me. All right, we're going to pause there. Let's look at the questions you you can do. Okay, so question one says, who did Dash tell Nina he was talking to? Who was he really talking to? We can do that. Um, who had many shady dealings in his business? We can do that. What newspaper is the only one left? We can do that. And, of course, you're always using races. races. Um, uh, we can't do four or five. All right, so one, two, and three you can work on. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.